So this is chapter two. Uh, we're going to go back and answer some of the questions from last time that the cousins, my cousins had okay. um, from our last recording. And so I'll just read off this. Uh, screen some of the questions so just some comments from the last recording okay. um, so someone uh, Anthony asked Anthony said we need some family tree diagrams and I think it probably was a little bit confusing as to mm. who's who in the zoo but we'll try and make it a bit clearer okay um, but everybody seemed to think it was quite interesting um, and so there was also a question, any reports of the suspected illegitimate half sibling that got left behind in Shanghai? We talked about that yeah, last time. Yeah, I don't think so. Hmm? But we did talk about it. This was um, your, your mum, the bombshell. Remember last time yeah, we yeah, talked about yeah. how your mum had yeah. a, yeah. a, a younger, like mm. when she was really mm. young, she mm. had a son yeah, who was right. raised as mm. her sibling. So, um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about his life? Because I think you found out, how did you find out that he was your actual half brother? Oh, that was before we left Shanghai. I was sick at that time. When you're sick, you got to sleep with the mum. So I think it's a few nights before we left Shanghai, my mother called him in and uh, told him the story about his birth. And I heard it, but I pretend I was sleeping. So yeah. I knew the uh, story and they both cried. So yeah. So was, you were saying that this is a few days before you left yes, Shanghai. I think so. When I work it out, it should be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll hopefully go into that story later yeah. in this session. Yeah, that's okay. right. All right. Uh, that's really interesting. So did you see him many times after that, after you left Shanghai? Oh, no, no more. Oh, no more at no all. More, Did no he not more. go and come to Hong Kong? Or? No, 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 at no, all. No, he he went to the village and got married there. I think oh. uh, he went he went to Qingdao to do his apprenticeship as some 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 sort of work. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But then, at that time, I think in China it's a bit of turmoil at that time. Mm -hmm. So he was lost. Then they found him, and he was lost. So yeah. at the end, I think he got married and. Uh, both him and his wife was very, how shall I say, agitated about things and uh, um, wanting us to send things to like a sewing machine when there's no material to be sold. I think, I don't think so. Anyway, we send the money and uh, for him to buy the sewing machine. Mm. So you corresponded with him via letters and things like no, that? No, I or? didn't, not straight, no directly. Mm -hmm. I think it, it was my mother's friend told us mm -hmm. and I got the job of sending my money over. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's lots more of that type of thing yeah. in your story. Okay. Um, all right, great. So there's also some chatter about Uncle Tommy, but we might cover that at a different time. Yeah. Um, and let's see, I think there was a couple of other questions here. Mm. All right, I think, uh, yeah, I think the rest is more about Uncle Tommy. So we, mm -hmm. we might talk about that another episode. Uh, oh, there, there's a question from Ellen. So Ellen was asking about how um, Popo, like your mum, was adopted. Mm -hmm. And if they wanted a son, why did they adopt a daughter? Oh, at that time, nobody would give away their son. So they only give away their daughter. Uh, I mean, commonly, uh, if you want a son, you have to pay a lot of money, I think, mm. to get one. Anyway, nobody believing ha having a, uh, other people's son as your son to inherit what you've got. So they rather have a girl, it's easy to get for once, and also they might bring little brothers along. So is that a common thing? Yeah, to very think? common. That's why my mother's name was Gandhi, followed by a brother. Oh, okay. So yeah. to, on the hope that she would bring yeah, other sons. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Well, not on the hope, it's, she definitely has to. <laughs> ah, okay. And how old was she, do you, do you think? You knew, like, I can't remember if we told last time how old she was when she got adopted. 
I don't know. I think it, it must be a few years older, about three years or four years. Oh, okay. So she it, might not have known she was adopted. She didn't know. So how did she find out? Later on, I think all, all her, especially when my father was a bit richer, you know, mm -hmm. to provide everything for everybody. And the, the people in the village would tell her. So everybody, all her brothers want to come to visit. So at the end, she took her mom in for uh -huh. came to live with us for a while. I believe he was very fond of Uncle Tommy and uh, he was she Jesus. was uh, okay. she was always looking at a little radio and saying that how comes the box Can inside speak. the box yeah. there's somebody there yeah <laughs> oh, was, she uh, was 90 something i think mm. and uh, i remember she has very uh, inverted red red uh retina no no the eyelid is red Oh. And I think she's a diabetes. Oh. I, I, now I will know. Yeah, that's why we all got it from her, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I think you had uh, another another bit that you forgot yeah, to tell us. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. I have, between Nancy and I, we, I had a sister, a younger sister, about two years younger than me, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think she gave, they gave her a name. They just call her Shomeme is a uh, small sister mm -hmm. that's it and uh, when she was born I think my parents was a bit disappointed because they wanted another boy but another girl came and at that time was very difficult because of the Japanese occupation at that time mm -hmm. and uh, we weren't very rich and uh, we hardly had a lot of money but she was sick I think they didn't look after her very well. They neglected her and she was very sick. I think she's got pneumonia. Well, what I see now mm. and she went, they went to put her in the hospital and uh, as soon as uh, they have room in the first class place at that time, the hospital, I think it was very terrible. My mother didn't want to. So anyway, when she brought to the, upgraded her bit uh, her board and she died oh so how so it's just in the hospital yeah she died in the hospital no 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 after a year oh, she was year, about right. a year yeah, old yeah right yeah mm -hmm. and uh, according to what they say it's i think it's some sulfur drug they couldn't get by the sound of it uh, at that time they don't have penicillin i don't think so I think it was the soft drug they couldn't get because of Japanese there and all the medication mm. is very tight and she died and I think as soon as she died my mother gave birth to my to Nancy after a year after mm. 10 months I think mm. so they were very close that's why Nancy is about three years younger than me instead of everyone's two years yeah. younger uh. and uh, I think they told me Nancy just looked exactly like her. Oh. So they were very sort of sorry for what they lost. So when Nancy came, they, she was very precious then. Of course, the uh, situation financially was quite good then. Everybody was looking up for the new baby. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I remember I had a sister. My mother said she should be born in a monkey's year. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's about a year older than Nancy. Nancy. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I was thinking the other day, how come you all have English names? When did you get your English names? Oh, that was a, when I went to high school. My oh, so father high school. gave it to okay, me. Okay, so yeah. I thought maybe you had no, them when no, you were no. in Shanghai. No, even. no, no, no. And Nancy's name is the same time my father gave us. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. My name came from Dorothy M Malone. I something some uh, uh, I'll, film try, star. I'll try and find a photo and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And I think later on, I think she became two hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you've got a you've got another uh, English name, right? You've got Shirley. Yeah, that was my own name. Um, I gave myself ah, that name okay. because of some of the certificate was graduate under that name, so I used that name quite a bit later. And then now I just 
use it's Dorothy. Yeah, yeah, I just use Dorothy. So, we, so your dad gave you the name Dorothy, mm. but you gave yourself the name mm, Shirley. Yeah. When were you using the name Shirley? When you went to the UK or? Before I went to UK. Oh, yeah. So in, in Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. Because we went to a sort of English school then. You got to have, they, they all have second names and all that. And I just gave myself a second name. That's and it. that was from Shirley Temple, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not from Shirley Temple. No, I don't know where I got that name from. I can't remember. Laverne that. and Shirley? No. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> only Shirley's I know. No, no, no. <laughs> Anyway, so let's let's go back um, back uh, to Shanghai yeah. because I think uh, what I'd like to cover today is um, the great escape, like the the to get to the point where you, you're growing up and then the communists came. So yeah, just to put us in context, when were the Japanese in China? What years that, that you remember? Was, yeah, that was before 1945. Okay, and how old were you then? 1945, you would. I have was been. about three. Three. So yeah. you wouldn't have remembered when the Japanese were occupied. Not very much, no. but I remember the truck with Japanese soldier with all these uh, hats and uh, mm -hmm. something hang. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Just a s just a sort of memory. Yeah. And and did did people in in Shanghai speak Japanese at all because of the occupation, or was it well, very much? The majority of people don't speak Japanese. Mm. The only one who speak Japanese is when they do business with Japanese or they work for them mm -hmm. and they have to speak Japanese then. So everybody was just speaking Shanghainese, yeah, right? Yeah. The, was there Mandarin? Like, was there a... Yes, you, you, we use Mandarin. Oh, you do? Bit. Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe yeah. it was just... But the only... Chinese. My mother doesn't like it. She always say they came from the north. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, so the Japanese were in occupation, and then you had a few years where it was um, the uh, Kuomintang, yeah, right? yeah, the KMT were in power, yeah, yeah, and I think we had very good life in Sing when we live in Singapore, mm -hmm. because I remember my mother and father went dancing, and uh, we weren't allowed to go. <laughs> <laughs> we were just. It would, those were the good days mm -hmm. that you see them all dressed up and going out and all. Yeah. And were you going to school at the time? Yeah, I went to Kingdi from Singapore. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And what what's what was the situation at school? Like, do you remember how? Yeah, school the school works? was very nice, and uh, it was a school that uh, selected one oh. that you have to pay a lot of money. But my family knows the principal. Mm -hmm. I think she, uh, she was no maid, she's a small lady. She was very good at her work, I think. She managed to get the right teacher and she she looks after all the school and she gets up really early in the morning and see everything's clean and uh, right. And she goes and uh, inspect the classes and all. She's mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's because she was very nice to me and uh, always giving me candies and all that. So didn't you get some American candy you were telling me? Yeah, some? yeah. She, she is the one who gave me some chocolate. And uh, she said, it's nice. So I had it. I put it in my mouth and uh, she said, it's nice, but it's from America. So I spit it all out. <laughs> well, so what was, the, what was the reasoning you spat it out? Like, why did you not like America? Because all the communists, they say America is bad. Oh, so by that time the communists were yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. That's I think they came when I was in primary two or three. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you notice the school has changed from there. Yeah, all the student came. It's a lot older than what we are because at that time we only allowed to attend which class when you how old you are. Mm -hmm. And everybody dresses very well, but later on you found all these older students are there and they don't speak Chinese, they speak funny dialect of Mandarin. And uh, they were a lot older and they dressed poorly and uh, they were very rough. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the teachers changed, all the nice beautiful teachers gone and uh, a lot of old ladies, you know, come and they look like a, which to me. <laughs> <laughs> but they all came from um, outside of Shanghai. Yeah. 
probably yeah, yeah. yes some of them from Shanghai mm -hmm. but they they look now look very much like all the communist people yeah. do you think it was just what they're wearing is that why it's the way they talk mm -hmm. and the way they're wearing things and the way they don't show any emotion when they speak to you mm. uh, say if they want you to do something they just say you go and do it mm. not like all the old days that you know, the teachers would sort of guide you in and make you do it things mm. like that it's very different you I was very small but I I can notice the difference mm. there mm. and the most important part is the teacher when I was in primary three, the teacher writes something on the blackboard. It says, uh, you don't like uh, your mother, don't like your father, but you only like Mao Papa, which is Chairman Mao, yeah. as your father. Mm. And I think that's wrong, but I can't say anything. I just look at it and I didn't say anything. And you're supposed to read it and print that into your brain no <laughs> <laughs> so ex try try to explain um what the, was the classroom like what we were used to like lots of tables and chairs yes, and a blackboard the same, the same, that sort the of same. thing the yeah. classroom didn't change hmm. but uh, all the atmospheres changed hmm. you can tell and uh, all the your schoolmates changed your schoolmates changed. Yes, because all these outside students came and yeah. uh, they sort of dominate the class. Mm. And when well, you're singing most of these songs, the common songs all the time, yeah. you're not allowed to do anything like what we used to do plays in the uh, hall. Go on. I, I remember when I was little, I was, big, I was the queen of the house and uh, all I have to say is two sentences and sitting there and people were dancing below me and it was quite a very sort of how can I put it it's like uh, something coming out of a comic mm. and you have all these plays and you have dancings and all that but you don't have any more mm. so in in the context of the of history of, of yeah. the, the historical events I thought there was like Kuomintang and the communists fought together to get rid of the Japanese. Is that how it worked? Well, this is what they told you. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how it worked, but I don't know what happened, but everybody's blaming the other party. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a period of time when there was the Japanese and then there was relative peace. Yes. And then right. the communists came in yeah. Yeah. when the Kuomintang got kicked out, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, how quickly did that happen? Was it like a, an overnight thing or...? But to us, it's an overnight because I remember we have to move from uh, the house my father built uh, temporary to a friend's place. So what a, happened to St. Paul's? St. Paul's we moved because my father built a home oh, okay, and right. near the airport. Okay. So we all went there. But when the, actually the war, the, the night they the communists came and take over in 1949. Oh, okay. So there's an actual takeover yeah. day. Overnight. Wow. Okay. And then uh, we were told we were very dangerous in where we live because it's near the airport. Mm. It might get bombed. Right. So we all moved to my father's friend's place in the city. Mm -hmm. So we, the whole family and the maid and everyone moved there. I think we stayed there for about a month. Right. Yeah. So we're all squashed together and yeah. Uh, yeah, and you can hear they sing the songs when they come in and uh, uh, it was it was it was chaos when you think and of it. And how old were you then? I should be about six or five okay. or six. I, I think I should be about six. And do you remember if you were scared or was it? Oh, we won. We were kids. No, nothing worries us. Oh, we moved there. Or oh, okay, there's a lot of other little friends to play with. No, 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 no worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think the adults, they yeah. they were worried. Yeah. They didn't know what's going on. Hmm. So it was uh, you. You moved with your dad's friend. So were your dad's friend also um, 
how what was their family situation? Was it just the husband and wife, or oh, they have the whole family as well, yeah, the older people and everybody there. Yeah, but we were actually like refugees to go there, and uh, yeah, the May goes there too, and uh, and then what happened after that? So you stayed there for a month. Yeah, then then everything went back to normal. We would go back to school and. Uh, oh, but did you have to go back to your old house, the one that yeah, your dad, yeah, we went your back dad to built? Our house. Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah. Near the airport. Yeah. Um, and is that is that where you lived after that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. Uh, that's where the picture is. Where we. Oh yeah, yeah I'll I'll, yeah, I'll share yeah, the yeah, photo. Yeah. So that's the photo with the photographer. That yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's the house. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm and so. Um, you were there for how many more years before you did the what I call the Great Escape? Uh, <laughs> I think we left about nineteen fifty or yeah. So only one, one more year then. No more than that. Oh. We lived there more than that. So when the communists came in, and then when you before you left, was only about how many years? They came in about 49. Yeah, so there's only one year if you left yeah, in 50. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we lived it in that house for quite a while, hmm. I think. Okay. And uh, explain to me, like, what do you remember between moving back to that house and then you li leaving Shanghai altogether? Do you yeah. remember much from that time? Um, not too much. To me, I think the most important thing is how we get into the police station. <laughs> okay, before we go to that, mm. what about your, did, do you remember your mum and dad talking much or were there other people that were also discussing how to get out of Shanghai? Yeah, other people I don't know mm. because we weren't there. And my father and mother, even when they discuss things like that, they keep very quiet uh. and uh, we're not. I, I don't know, yeah. but I caught them listening to the news from America and I said I was going to report them to the police. You told them this? Yeah, I told them because th that's what my teacher told us. Mm. Um, you have to report whoever it is, doesn't matter they're your relative or anything like that, you have to report. Mm. So my father said, no school from there, so we don't go to school anymore. Mm -hmm. Why do you think your dad was so concerned about the communists? Like, I'm assuming a lot of other people just stayed, stayed in Shanghai and didn't worry about it too much. No, a lot of people want to get out at that time. Oh. All my dad's friends, I think they all get out. And oh, all yeah. to Hong Kong pretty much? or Pretty much to Hong Kong. And some of them think they went to the US straight away if they have contacts there. Mm. So... A few left and didn't have very good life there. Yeah. Some of them died, some of them went to the labor camp or something like that. But why, why was it the case? Like, I'm just trying to think, um, was it everybody knew that the communists were bad or it was it like... I don't, I don't know. I think I was too young to realize mm. what it is. Yeah. Um, but from what I learned in school, which I don't think it's appropriate for children to know or to, to learn it that way. Mm. I don't think it's right. I mean, even me at that age, I don't think it's right to do this because, you know, my our principal. The one that gave you candy? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Who committed suicide. Oh. Yeah. And after she died, she took a lot of sleeping pills, I think. After she died and the teacher was saying that how much, um, how many shoes, pair of shoes she's got, how many coat, mink coat or whatever the coats she's got and you know that's not right because all the other people has nothing to wear and no shoes to wear and things like that. And I remember one of the kids from the class put, a, put his hand up and saying, my mother said, don't speak of the death, something wrong with the death because they already died. <laughs> Mm. He was very brave <laughs> because his father's always in Hong Kong and always brings something nice for him. And I remember that guy went very well. I even remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, 
I think at that time, I don't know how I get to see the funeral. And oh, the, this is the principal's yeah, funeral. Yeah, mm. not funeral. Seeing that she's getting burned, you know, she's getting cremated. Oh. And I, I can, I see the shadow that goes. She sits up mm. as she goes in, and I thought she, she's not dead. Mm. How can they do that? That's why I don't want cremation. I, uh, I have a barrier. Mm. Uh, no, no, I don't want anybody to burn me when I still can feel it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that that was very hard. I don't know why they make you go at that age mm. to go and see this. Uh. Yeah, was she made an example of? Is that what, what do you think now? I don't know. Mm. I feel strange at that time and. You know, this sort of created in my mind. Yeah, because this time. was you were saying that um, the principal was your dad's friend, right? Yeah, your yeah, family, friend, fa yeah, family, family friend. Yeah, family friend. Maybe that's why you went. No, no, no. It's all the student went. I oh, think. Yeah, okay. I went with the kids. Okay. We're all there and staring, and when she sits up, I nearly cried out. Whoa! Oh, that's pretty terrible, um, and so. Fast forward now to to what I call the Great Escape. So, obviously, there was a a time when you left Shanghai. How did that come about? Because your dad left first, right? Yeah, my dad left first with his boss. Okay, and just on a business trip. It stays on a business yeah. trip, but never came. So back. at the time, business was still okay. Like business was allowed to be no, happening. They already sort of, if you are rich. They get you first, right? And uh, and make all your people work for you, turn against you, so you can hear them calling, Mister So and So, So and So. You've you've committed so much sins, and and then you see people jumping out of the building. Mm. Yeah, I think um you're also telling me before that there were. Um, a lot of things happening around your house, like behind in the yeah, fields and yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So was this in the house that was in uh, the airport, near the yeah, airport? Yeah, near the airport. So what, what happened there? Like, what are some of the horrific stories? Well, you see people uh, being shot, you know, by the army. They, they came, they, they carry, this, carry this fellow who can't even, who cannot walk anymore, just drag him down there and then they say something and then everybody's sort of shooting at him and he died and then the family went in get get the body or oh, the family of the person yeah, went and yeah, picked up yeah, the body yeah so do you did you have any idea of what this person's crime was if there was I don't a crime know. i had no idea i was too young yeah i don't know but we saw this and i think my younger brother went and too went too and he saw it <laughs> so he would have been what three yeah he was so? very he, i think he still remembers Mm. How we, I, I don't know how we remember when we were so young. There's pretty traumatic things, yeah. so maybe that's And then why. you see people hanging on a tree. Self-hanging? Self-hanging. Yeah. And I remember the mayor was saying, I didn't see his tongue. <laughs> you didn't see his tongue? What's that mean? They're supposed, if you hang yourself, your tongue will fall out. <laughs> Is that just a myth? <laughs> yeah. That's what Chinese believe in, I think. Right, right. And... So, do you do you recall what you thought of as a child about all these deaths and these hangings and well, uh, killings? You don't judge. You just go and see because you're curious mm. what's going on. And uh, but and, and did your parents say anything? Oh, May got the so you know the scolding and the tell tell them how can you bring the children to go and see this and all that. So I just passed by and we just we went out and. It all didn't come to any conclusion that you shouldn't go or you should go. Because at that time, I don't think our parents were that strict about things. Mm. Just So at the time when all this is happening, what, where was your dad was, went to Hong Kong. Yeah. So what was your mum doing during the day? Like if your maids are looking after you. Yeah, my mum goes out. I don't know what she does. <laughs> <laughs> she plays mahjong and she, she goes and sort out other people's business and all that. She was uh, quite popular between, you know, with all the friends and all that. She managed to 
sort of prepare everything and uh, so I told you the the old place we was I was born and uh, she gave it to my father's youngest sister mm -hmm. to live in because at that time I think my grandfather was living in there and uh, because of the communists and we're moving we're not staying in Shanghai so he has to sh go back to the village oh. so he, he went back and that house was my mother gave the right for my father's youngest sister to go and live there because mm -hmm. they didn't have any place to live okay right so up to now I met this uh, auntie she's still very grateful to my mother oh that's good yeah yeah um, so how, how, like you were saying, is your dad's youngest sister, um, was she a significant number of years younger than your brother, uh, your, your dad? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm just thinking of your aunt yeah, is yeah. still alive yeah. and still very grateful. Uh, I don't know what happened to oh, her then. Okay. Yeah. I met her about five years ago. Okay. More than that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, okay. So your dad's now in Hong Kong, your mum's mm -hmm. still floating around yeah. in Shanghai yeah. doing all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what made you, how did you escape Shanghai? We went on the train after we've got the permit to leave. But how did you get the permit to leave? That's why I told you about the police yeah, station story. Yeah, so tell us about the police you station. You want to hear yes, it again? Yes, of course. We haven't recorded it yet. Oh, I see. <laughs> Um, my mother went and told the people in the police station that she is not able to provide for the four children because her husband is in Hong Kong and not coming back and he has another woman there. So she was sort of deserted with four children and she can't have them. Since you are a new country, you have the children. So she got all of us packed up in a little little bag at that time it's just a, a cloth folding some clothes and then <laughs> the four of us all going to the police station and she dumped us there and she went away so we were there for about three or four days i think yeah so so how old was um uncle patrick your your brother i think he must be about i think how old would i be let me see I would be about eight if I'm in third grade, yeah, about eight, mm -hmm. and he would be ten. Yeah, yeah. so the ten, ten was the oldest, he was yeah, the yeah. oldest at ten, and you're all sitting there in in the police station Yeah. for four days. Yeah, we lived there. So what happened at night time? How, how did you sleep? Where did you sleep? I don't know. I can't remember <laughs> now, but the, we were there for four, nearly four days. Yeah. And did the police actually look after you? Oh, they gave us food and mm -hmm. uh, make us sing their songs. And they all coming at that time. They all knew they have to learn these songs too. So they, they were. These are the propaganda songs, right? Yeah, the yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. the uh, communists yeah, and how yeah, fantastic yeah, Chairman yeah, Mao yeah, are songs, yeah. right? You have to sing, and uh, everybody knows. And these people are very new to the police station. They come and they have to learn too. So. It's all on the blackboard with the lyrics and you just follow them. Everybody sings the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we had a quite a good time there because we were entertained by all these people coming in and out, in and out. As you, if you were in your own house, you, have, you don't have all that. <laughs> yeah. So there's the four of you, at least you were together. Yeah. Yeah. So ha what happened, like, did you, after the four days, like, did your mum come get you or? They called for my mother. When you say call, did they use a phone? I don't know. Like, at the time was a phone a thing? <laughs> I think we do have a home in the, uh, uh, we don't have a, f wait a minute. I think we do have a phone in the house. Yeah. But very seldom used. Mm -hmm. Which is very expensive, I yeah. assume. Yeah. I don't know how. But they, they managed to get my mother to come and collect us and mm -hmm. saying that you will have your visa to go. <laughs> <laughs> your permit to go. Yeah. Yeah. So then you got the permit. Do you think you stayed much longer after that before no. you left? 
I think it's about in a matter of weeks. Oh, and then you all packed up and left. Yeah. And that's My when... mother's done everything. Oh. She managed to the, uh, rent the house out, gave all the furnitures away to the servants and the whoever friends who need them. Wow. And packed quite a bit of things mm -hmm. for sea mail to mm -hmm. go to Hong Kong. Yeah. Because I remember we have a wooden big chest that came after we were, we, we were in Hong Kong from Shanghai with all the pots and everything. I don't know why, why I bother at that time. Yeah. And so how did you, so you left at that time? Like, was there a car that picked you up? Oh, no, or? no. We went to the station, to the railway station mm -hmm. and took a train. And I remember my eldest aunt, my father's elder daughter, no, my father's sister mm -hmm. came to see us off and uh, the younger one too. Everybody came, I think. And the, the big auntie said to me, if the Americans are coming back to, uh, uh, coming back to Shanghai, you will write to me and say, our second aunt is coming back to, to Shanghai, then I will know. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you had code words. You had code words. Right, right. Yeah, I remember she told me very seriously because at that time my second aunt is Joyce is already in uh, the US. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, she said, you know, if I say that, then she will know that Americans are coming back to Shanghai. Oh, okay. And that, was that considered a good thing, right? The Americans coming yeah, back yeah, to they, Shanghai they, was a good of thing, Of course, right? all the rich people were American to come back for the good life. Ah, uh, okay. Um... So you caught the train? We caught the train from Shanghai to Guangzhou. Mm -hmm. And how long would that take? Do you know, like, it was a two-day About day two days okay. or three days. I can't, yeah. I think two days. So you're just on the train the whole time? Or? Yeah, oh, on okay. the train all day. So I was running around, going to the room to, you can sing a song and everybody can hear you, you know, on the microphone oh. and all that. And you're running around like, and it, it was fun at that yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. A bit of an adventure. Yeah. And obviously with your family, you just, yeah. it's a bit safer feeling because you're with everybody yeah. else. So do you, do you get the feeling that everybody on the train was escaping at the same time or were they no, just like no. day to day travel? No, some of them just travel. Just day to day But travel. not a lot of people have that long planes because we went to Guangzhou. We get down and stay in a hotel. Then from Guangzhou, we go to Macau. Mm -hmm. We have to take a ship from from Guangzhou, from Guangzhou to, to, uh, Macau. to Macau, yeah. And that I think is for overnight. I remember I was sleeping there on a ship, and then get the wait a minute. We'll get to Macau. That's right. And in Guangzhou, we stay in the, the top hotel at that wow. time. Wow, but. It's it's gone now. Mm. At that time, we stood at the top. And you would have all stayed in the one room, yeah? Or I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And then when we go through the custom, when we get out of the country, then from Guangzhou, I remember my, I had a gold plate mm -hmm. on, on me, and they took it. They said you can't take that. And Who took it? The, the custom people. Oh, custom yeah. people, right. Yeah. You can't take it. Um, but they, they gave you a receipt <laughs> it's with them. And when you come back, you can claim it. You can't take this one. Then my mother said, it's from her grandmother. It's a sort of Alien. souvenir yeah. or whatever. And uh, no, you can't. I remember they, they took that away from me. And then... I think it was quite serious that you had to have to go through all your belongings mm. and a lot of questions and all. Luckily, we all went through, so we went, we went on to the ship. So it's the five of you, your mum and yeah, the four of you. Yeah. Did you have your Amar with you? No, 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 no. It's just that your mum. Mum. And she has a friend who has a little boy who is, uh, that little boy, it's not hers. It's my father's boss's son with us oh. so it's uh five children and two, two ladies. adults yeah, yeah two right. ladies okay and so now you're in macau yeah 
Of course, when we were in Macau, this little boy went to uh, his dad. I no. don't know where because where we're staying is uh, the boss sister's place. Right. In Macau, it's a very rich family. They have a very good garden, and uh, I remember they have maids all over the place and serving us with Shanghainese breakfast. What's Shanghainese breakfast? Uh, we have porridge, mm -hmm. uh, we have salted eggs and things like that. But at that time in Macau, they were having European breakfast. Yeah, because it's more Portuguese, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they have uh, sort of eggs and uh, toast and things like that. It was, they, they make it very special for you because you're different. What, the, the Shanghainese yeah, breakfast, yeah. right. And so, um, were you long, long in Port, uh, in Macau? Yeah, I think it's about a week or two. A week or two? Yeah. Oh, that's not that long. But. Not that long, because we were dying to go to Hong Kong. Mm, we, that's you, that's to, only somewhere we have to step, that's it. Yeah. And do you know, were you waiting for something? Or, like, why were you in, in Macau for, for over a week? Because we were waiting for... Uh, people to take us to Hong Kong. At that time, Hong Kong would not let any uh, Chinese or North China people to go in unless you're Cantonese. Oh. So uh, I think they managed to get four different people, the maids and uh, uh, anyway, take the four of us to go on the ship. Okay, so these are the maids from your boss, your yeah, your dad's yeah, yeah. boss's sister's they, they place. They found out. They, right. they, 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 found they found someone to take us separately. But one by one, they all picked us up. <laughs> it's really funny because we were all wear the same thing. My, we were from Shanghai, so we we're all wearing the wing tree things. At that time, it's spring, <laughs> and uh, my sister and I wear the same. Coat. Outfit. Yeah. I remember it's a green coat with the leopard collar. Oh wow. <laughs> and we have the same star here. <laughs> um the four of us we all wear cloth made shoes. Mm -hmm. So that's only Shanghainese people do that. Cantonese they wear flip flops oh. or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, so we'll, what happens when you get picked up as such? Well, at the, when we get to Hong Kong, then we were all picked up by the, uh, I think, the inspector. And the four of us just sit, you know, sort of set aside and then take us down to the hold or somewhere down the ship. And then I think my father came. But how did your father know? Well, my father was trying to uh fetch us from the ship oh so he knew you were coming yeah, yeah so okay, he right, knew right. yeah so he, he came down and we all cried so much we didn't know what to do because we didn't know what's going to happen and then my, i remember my father was telling my brother you know you're the eldest you have to look after them and uh, don't cry and then <laughs> so he ordered some uh plated uh rice with you know Dip tau fan and and everything. That's the first time we ever had that, and uh, we had that. And so where did he? Sorry, where did he order it from? Because you're on the bottom of the ship, right, yeah, at the moment. Yeah, he can order from, I think the canteen or whatever. We don't know, we don't know where it came yeah. from, but we <laughs> have food. And then we were all sent back to Macau. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so you didn't get back to you didn't get to Hong Kong. No, no, such, no. Just... And after we back to. Uh, we went back to Macau. My mother was trying other ways. And was your mum in Macau when yeah, you were yeah, on the ship? Yeah. So she because didn't leave. The thing is, to get us to Hong Kong first, then she would sort of smuggle herself in. I think that was the, the plan. plan. That was plan A. <laughs> yeah. And then couldn't do it. So I remember we were walking along the street in Macau. I still remember the green light, the, the blue light and all that in the, on the street. When you say blue light, what, what do you mean? Fluorescent lights or? The street lights. Like as in um, the green and red light? No, no, no. Or just no. The, 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 the street, street lights. lights. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, we didn't see that in Chai. There's no light like this. Would they had gas, gas light, lanterns? No, no, no. 
Yeah. So what happens at night time? <laughs> in Shanghai? It's dark. It's just it's dark. dark. <laughs> it's just dark. Unless you go to the commercial place and uh, they have all these neon lights and all that. No, usually you don't see any lights. Mm. So this was in Macau, you had lots of lights there. Well, they, they were sort of more modernized, mm -hmm. I would say. And they, my mother and this fellow was walking along the street talking about business, how to get us all to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And talking about the price, you know, they can't station there to, so people will listen to you. So they were walking up and down, and I was walking with them and just <laughs> trying, you know, they're just trying to pretend they're walking on the street. And then the next thing we knew is all of us went on to this little champagne thing. thing. And uh, when we get to the middle, they, they told us all to get into this little hole. And it's it's sort of the partition of the ship uh, of the boat, yeah. and then they nail you in with a board and nails, and then with little so, sort of space for you to breathe. It was so dark and hot in there. I feel so sick. I want to be sick. Then I was, I remember my mother was holding my mouth, and then you can hear people from outside knocking and poking things in and just you think my mother's very brave i think with four children that you can't control them <laughs> yeah and i don't know but anyway this went through and uh, i think the people take money and went away and uh, we sort of safely get to kowloon yeah so you were people smuggled <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> to kowloon <laughs> to kowloon and uh, the fellow wants the money. My mother said, no, you deliver us to the husband first. Mm. So he took us all the way to Hong Kong to my father's office and he paid. Uh, that was... <laughs> Do you have any concept of how much that would have been? I think it's less than a thousand dollars. But at the time it would have been yeah, a lot of money, right? a lot of money, yes. Yeah. I think they, they were talking about hundreds. Mm. Yeah, I remember they were talking about hundreds. To me, that's a... A lot of money. Yes. And so they, they just got paid in cash in, in Hong Kong dollars? Like how old are the cash US? Cash in Hong Kong dollars, I think. Yeah, cash. because your dad would yeah, have been yeah. able to pay it. So anyway, after we, we went up there and uh, we went to a place called Four Seas. It's like a hotel, but it's, it's not so much like a hotel, but it's a sort of a guest house. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, uh, it's in Homantin where Nancy was staying. And uh, at that time, we didn't know what it is anyway. I remember we stayed in the hotel and my father went to work and my mother gave my brother a dollar. And he went out and got 10 buns. You know, the one with the red bean and all that. We were so happy. We never see anything like that, never tasted anything like that. So it's um, a very Cantonese type of food, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think we we didn't speak any Cantonese, so my brother gave the guy a dollar and pointing to the bread and the guy said ten. Yes, ten. <laughs> so he got ten of them <laughs> back to us and uh, we were all, all having a great time with that ten buns. <laughs> Oh, that's great. So that's your best your best memory ever yeah, of yeah. when you first got to Hong Kong was yeah, the 10 yeah. buns. Yeah. A dollar for 10 buns. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. So do you, at the time, do you think you knew that you were never going to go back to Shanghai to live? No, we were, I heard my mother was saying we were about to stay for six months. Oh, and when so, the situation gets better, we will go back. Okay, so at the time they were very optimistic that yeah, things would get yeah, better. So yeah. they would they were planning to yeah. go home. It yeah. was just a temporary yeah. thing to to hide from the yeah. communists. Is that like effectively? Well, to get away from this tension, from the mm. you know, my father was sort of people would be looking for him because with another name, and the the May says we don't have someone that, in that name there. When the, when she told my mother, my mother said. Uh, that was the name that my father used in uh, in Hang Hangzhou when he was the police chief there. Right. And uh, 
I think that must be the during the uh, Japanese occupation or something like that. I don't know. Because mm. all I can remember is when we live in Hong so uh, just Petra and I. I was oh. very little then. Was that when you were living with your grandma? No, no, no. We lived there independently. No, no one. In Hangzhou is another place. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when when did you get thrown to Hangzhou? I don't know, but oh. all I remember is I had a fight with my mother. I was very young then, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. She told me most of it, but I remember something because I. At the, but you at would this, have only been like five yeah, or six like, or something. No, right? no, no. Even younger than that, because before, before Nancy ever come. Oh. It was very young. And you had an argument with your mom? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. much so that she she put you to a, to a different city? <laughs> she was she was mad. I think she was she is the most commonest people I ever met. Oh, the, your mom? The person I ever met. She said to me, uh, what is yours? I said, this is mine. I wouldn't give it away. And she said, uh, what you wear is mine. And what you, even you is mine. I get, <laughs> so I was so angry. So I, I took everything off. All your clothes. Give it back to you. Give it back to you. <laughs> then she was sort of laughing. I, I didn't see that. I was so angry. I said, now you go if you want to go. You know. So she I, said that to you. Yeah. So I ran away. Naked. <laughs> Naked. <laughs> and they, they always laugh at these things. And so I remember so well. I don't know. <laughs> it was so funny. But this was still in Shanghai. But then suddenly that, you're in, in Hangzhou. Hangzhou. Oh, that's oh, in Hangzhou. That's in Hangzhou. So, so this yes. is your, your mom, your yeah, dad, yeah, yourself and yeah, Uncle Patrick yeah, were all in Hangzhou. And a maid. And a maid in yeah. Hangzhou. The old maid always stays with us. And she was really... she. I, I was the apple in her eye. And... Uh, she would even fight with my father if I if I ever get beaten or something like that. So, <laughs> but you don't have it. Do you have any concept of how long you were in Hangzhou? I don't know. No. I don't but know. But you just know you were in yeah, Hangzhou. Yeah, I just remember all this. So I remember I was in Hangzhou at that time. So when they talk about my father working in Hangzhou, it must be at that time. I think. Mm. Whatever before, whatever happened, I don't know. Mm, interesting. All right. So I think we might call it for this time round. Okay. Um, next time we'll talk more about Hong Kong. Okay. <laughs> okay.